I guess here. Is that okay? empezando en un par de minutos, entonces no voy a poder volver a contestar. Si hay alguna cosa, escribe por favor. Bueno, y si más la foto en tanga, pero no la voy a poder usar. Ya ahí vamos a empezar algo muy bonito. Si quieren decir algo, si quieren participar, pueden chatear por acá o Pueden hacer preguntas y acá él las van, nos las van a sacar. O, o cualquier comentario, si quieren también. Hola, Entonces, hay que correr esto. El sitio, acá. el sitio siempre perfecto y está bueno. Pero la imagen está encima de mí. Acá, si no te pasa. Acá, hasta acá. ¿Ves? Hasta no nos podemos pasar. ¿Y vos? ¿Hasta dónde? Hasta la silla. Okay, yeah, you, you're going to follow us a bit, so we're going to be here. Alright, welcome everyone. Eh, bienvenidos a todos los que están en la audiencia internacional. Oh, you need the mic. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Te lo paso después. Hi everyone and welcome. Um, 
Really excited to be here today with you guys. Uh, my name is Fabian Rodriguez. I'm here with uh, Reynaldo Torres, long date uh, friend, and uh, we hope to share some of our color computer adventures with you guys. Um, some of you have, uh, I have spoken on before uh, yesterday. Some of you I haven't, and this is gonna go um, as fast as you want to. And we welcome questions while we're talking. And I'm gonna pass this little book here. Uh, there's a few screenshots, but uh, I think it's interesting to have in your hands the actual documentation and things that we rescued after more than 30 years. So if you can please uh, grab this and just pass it around. Um, Coco Bite, Coco Friendship and Latin American Ambition. Eh, buenos días a todos los que nos están escuchando en español también. Y eh, muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Eh, mi nombre es Fabián Rodríguez, estoy con Reinaldo Torres, que viajó desde Bogotá, yo vine desde Montreal, y hoy les vamos a hablar de nuestra aventura con Coco Byte, nuestro grupo de usuarios del Color Computer desde Colombia hasta hoy en día en Canadá y en Colombia también. Eh, this, this, yes. uh, this slide deck is under a free license, so if you guys want to download it later on, I'm going to make it available and you can build on it, change it, and use the material in, in here. So I'm going to start with uh, presenting myself a little bit, Reynaldo is going to talk about himself, then we're going to uh, tell you guys how we met, what happened at that time, what our COCO uh, timeline is, and uh, we're going to share with you what was difficult for us coming back to the COCO community today and what we hope to achieve in the next coming years. And we want to propose you guys to be part of that adventure and come with us and help us. And we look, look up to you a lot for this to be uh, possible. Um, so by day, what I do is um, I'm a GNU Linux guy, so I don't, I don't uh, specifically work with uh, Windows or, or other operating systems much, or I try not to. And um, I'm a huge free open source software advocate, so everything I do, I try to document and code in the open and share with others. And that's, that's one part of, of free open source software, but the other part is making sure that people understand that what you're sharing, uh, they can share back again without restriction and build on it and do other stuff and learn from it. So that, that's a huge part and, and part of that is uh, uh, what brings me to enterprise technical support, and I put consultant in, in quotes because really, uh, I mean, when you say you're a consultant in IT, you pretty much do everything and anything. So my focus, I'd like to say, is really um, doing systems administration, and this, of course, is for uh, customers, but I'm also a family sysadmin, and if you're in IT, or if you're even remotely interested or, or good at computers, you end up doing everything that has to do with computers at home. Um, having a, a, a big family, well, by today's standards, four kids uh, at home, that means uh, from the youngest age, they look up to me for repairing or fixing stuff later on to learn and to do new stuff with whatever they've learned before. And Desktop and server support never ends. There's always something to fix or to install or to uh, bring, the, you know, new stuff to bring up. And I love, for some reason, um, I, it's really the opposite. Most IT people hate writing documentation. I love writing technical documentation. To me, there's, uh, there's very apparent beauty in having a good schematic uh, accompanied with good text uh, concise, bullet points, uh, procedures, checklists, I love that. And when there isn't none, I tend to just get sucked into it and build one. So that brings me to, oh, I forget that. So um, yeah, I'm not a developer, I'm not really a hardware guy, and when I say not really, I can do a bunch of stuff and people look at me and tell me, yeah, you're a hardware guy. Well, I'm getting started with soldering and repairs in the Coco world, so that's part of a uh, you know, the, the, the experience, I think, getting back to vintage computing and not soldering stuff, 
to me means you're missing a big part of the experience. And one thing I forgot, um, in the Cocoa community, my, my, one of my main focuses lately has been contributing to Cocopedia and adding up to the existing documentation and rescuing documentation that is around, uh, that, that is scattered in Facebook, Discord, and so on, and then putting together something very easy. Uh, one of the Cocopedia pages that I'm particularly proud of is the, um, uh, the, the drive wire cable uh, documentation and schematics. There was a bunch of different versions around and I put everything together and that's coming up uh, together nicely. Uh, also by day, so we all have double lives, right? Uh, our cocoa stuff and vintage interests sometimes are hidden from plain sight. Uh, so I'm also doing new Linux uh, uh, stuff. Uh, wait a minute. It's the next one. Oh no. Okay, that's one that was once in the, in before. So I'm I'm gonna leave uh, Reynaldo to present himself. And uh, Reynaldo, you're up. Hello. Hey, thank you guys. Um, good morning. Um, I mean, I, I do not really like following the slides. I'm sorry for that, Fabian. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> but, click but anyways, for you. Yeah. Um, um, being here today, it's been a great experience. Um, I mean, getting in touch with other guys that um, pretty much share the same, uh, <laughs> um, the same things that I like. So, and getting back like 40 years ago when we met with Fabian, so it's, it's been really great. Um, like Fabian said, I, I still work in technology, um, but even though that my wife says that I spent um, 10 or eight, oh, 10, 12 hours sitting at, at a computer <laughs> and fixing things, um, once the day finish, I still want to do my stuff. So it's, I mean, it's hard to know, but it probably is something you guys <laughs> uh, live every day. Um, but uh, this is why I'm here. Um, so I come, I come from the Unix and storage world. Um, I believe it's been 25 or something years. Uh -huh. So when I was coming here, um, the flight attendant asked me uh, for my password and said, uh, I mean, and what do you do? So yeah, I work in IT. Um, how many years? I believe 25. Wow, that's a full <laughs> life. No, <laughs> bet that I'm. I mean, older than that. So, um, anyways, um, I do system administration and I run my family, which is um, two kids. Um, I used to work a lot on server support, different platforms, HP, um, Sun. Um, mostly. Um, I'm a um, hardware hobbyist. Um, so I, I mean, I probably, I, I do not, I cannot be, say that I'm a developer, but one of the things that I like is, I mean, doing every day, um, I mean, getting, getting in touch with what is new, right? So um, I buy a bunch of uh, developer kits and uh, just, run a project and see if it works and then I'm done, right? So, I mean, getting in touch with the community, it's, it's great because you actually uh, could get some goals and get to do something that um, something someone really needs and, and have that working. So by day, I'm a computer enthusiast. Um, I love to cook, that's what I do. Um, I'm not a cook a veteran. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm a veteran because of the years that I have. <laughs> Um, but um, I was talking with one of you guys here and it said that um, I probably was disconnected around 25 years from the cocoa world, but uh, I mean, it's strange to be back. And a um, um, couple of things I've never been disconnected of is like I said, electronics. So I like doing hacks, uh, mods, and a um, bunch of stuff. Uh, I have done a bunch <coughs> of things with the Raspberry Pi. And um, yeah, uh, Fabian said that I'm a um, video disc owner, so I got a yeah, large so collection. So, so when I got when I arrive here, I say, hey, you know there are some uh, laser discs there. <laughs> oh, let me check. I got <laughs> I got all of them. <laughs> yeah, I I um, 
I, I put this together for him, and uh, the last item I added, I, I thought, you know what, being a video disc owner, you don't need to explain a bunch of stuff. Just the fact that you own that thing will tell the story by itself. So uh, we also had some. Oh. You know, my wife tells me, why don't you get rid of all those? I mean, those are already on a streaming system. I say no. <laughs> That's different, right? It's, I mean, it's like you own it, and there is a story on every um, disc that I own. <laughs> so, um, I mean, this is a quick timeline. I got my first Coco when I was uh, 15 or something, so that was in 1984. <laughs> um, I did the upgrade in 1987. I believe Fabian came to the US, he bought the chip, and we upgraded a couple of cocos um, that we had. I, I'm not pretty sure. I have no idea. <laughs> Some parts of that, uh, we, we keep uh, remembering stuff and putting together the timeline every time we meet. And But but yeah, we work together most of the time on any upgrades or programming or anything that we were doing. And this is kind of a trick. It's not really a timeline. It, it says yeah. really what happened. For 25 plus years, we were completely outside of yeah. any cocoa activity and so the first coco came in in you know 1984 and the second one in 2021 <laughs> because we bought back the machines yeah we yeah. we, we um, fabian went to colombia in 2020 i believe it was on february i mean just a month before this whole thing started and um i think we spoke about coco that time right so yeah <laughs> so what happened is uh you know um we got to school we got jobs, got kids, families, life got in the middle of all this stuff. And we kind of forgot really the roots of what brought us into our jobs. We both yeah. are in IT today and, and, and specifically uh, support roles, customer facing roles. And it's crazy because uh, you have this notion that you know the nerds or the geeks of the 80s are these anti-social people uh, that don't talk to other people. And the reality is we talk to other people all the day, all the yep. time. <laughs> so yeah, first job, turns out you were doing yeah, Mac support. Yeah, so I, support. I did Mac support. I, I remember working AUX. That, that was a very strange uh, Unix thread that came from Apple. Uh, I get that because for some reason, the um, uh, comp company that I worked for, that was a university in Cali. They bought a bunch of Mac stuff and uh, so they got that Mac server, so uh, why don't you just connect it and plug it into the internet and set up some mail servers, uh, Gopher servers, yeah. and a bunch of things. So we, we're very lucky in that respect <laughs> that we were able to witness the beginnings of yeah. the internet. Yeah. And of course, that you know was a bit more interesting than the Cocoa at the time. So, um, so we spoke in 2020, and then uh, I was trying to figure out how to get a Cocoa, and I got my first Cocoa tree, that, I mean, my, all, all my initial stuff were gone. I used to live in Cali, and my, when my parents pa uh, passed away, um, everything disappeared. So I pretty much, I mean, no, lost all that I had. Okay, how about this? It will work better, thank you. So um, I went online, and I was trying to look for a cocoa that I could get, I mean, soon in Colombia, and I found one in Mexico, so I bought it on, on eBay. And that's when I got my, f I mean, my new Coco that was, I mean, a couple of months ago. So, yeah, that's, I believe, pretty much. My turn. Yep. And yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I have mine. Okay. So my first Coco is a strange story. My dad was coming back from Canada. We moved to Colombia in 1978 after living in Montreal. My dad was a teacher at, at university uh, in marine biology. And he had to wait at the airport in Miami for five or six hours. So he figured, yeah, I'll uh, just go out and look around. Uh, one of the shops he went to in the mall that he went to uh, was Radio Shack. And he saw a Coco one. And of course, he picked the 4K model. <laughs> and so that was my first computer. Brought it back to Colombia and told me, don't touch that thing. You know, it's, it's expensive. And uh, I'll let you know what, what it is later. I'm going to sleep. And next day, 7 a.m., I was up, like most kids. I was 11 years old, something, 11, 12 years old. 
Uh, of course, I unwrapped it, connected it, started looking around, connected it to the TV, and the manuals are just these absurdly well done things that at that age I could read. I couldn't speak English, but I could read the code and I knew that, you know, green screen, I type, these things are here in a kind of a mono space font. I typed things without knowing what it was and for the longest time that's what we did. We didn't speak English at all. And so that was my first Coco. I got a second Coco um, because these guys had Coco 2s. Reynaldo and Ricardo, our other friend in Cali, uh, he's watching us uh, right now. Ricardo, espero que estés bien y nos escuches bien fuerte y con mucho cariño desde acá. And so Ricardo and Reynaldo had Coco 2s, so I felt kind of left out. Got my Coco 2, and then <laughs> last year when I came back in this scene, I started buying one and two and three and started kind of, you know, uh, getting the notion that these machines uh, um, needed to be rescued somehow and upgraded. And of course, we're always say saying, uh, I need to sell those, but we keep, you know, we keep them around. And at some point, I think that the important thing is to share whatever we can. And in my case, I think sharing the hardware and fixing it before and upgrading it is also important. And so this is my original Coco One, which um, if you didn't know, there's a layer of, under the layer of, of gray paint, there is all only black. The plastic is black. And at some point, it was so badly um, uh, you know, damaged that I just figured I'll just strip the whole paint. And, it, and I thought it looked uh, pretty good. Um, this is Reynaldo at that time. So as you see, he hasn't changed much. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit of more gray hair to add to credibility with customers. And this is one of his uh, stashes. So uh, uh, like a half hour ago, I, I asked for a few friends uh, in, in Colombia to send us pictures of that time. And strangely, our friends have more pictures about that than, than, than our families yep. and ourselves. And they do remember that we used to hang around at the party and then, of course, hang around with computers, uh, both at Reynaldo's house and at my house. And Ricardo at the time is, well, is, still is much older than us and he would welcome us in his, his apartment. And the important thing here is all this hardware is very nice, but at that age, uh, you know, you're not really taken seriously by older people normally. So I think I was 11, you must have been 12 or 13. Yep. Um, and the way we met was really strange. This is a, a, the letter that the local Radio Shack dealer sent to, uh, to Reynaldo. Uh, so yeah, this is 85, I think. And how old were you? 85, born in? I was in? 14. So he was, he's 14, oh, and he if you... 13. Okay, so if you look at this, they're inviting him to participate to a local um, uh, users groups conference, which was really the IT, the IT conference at the hotel Intercontinental, Intercontinental Hotel in Cali, Colombia. Uh, so Reynaldo, Reynaldo's job was to demonstrate a, a kid's computer to kids or to adults that would get in. They needed something fun to happen when the elevator doors would open. And of course, <laughs> The speech yeah. sound cartridge did the job. So Reynaldo was there sitting at a nice table. When I got up, because you know I, I was seeking other computer users, I got there um, at 13 and then elevators o doors open. Reynaldo is there with a speech synthesizer greeting people. Hello, welcome to whatever. And wow, you have a car computer? I have one too. Oh, what is this model? And what are you doing? And how come you're here? Oh, I was invited. Oh, wow, that's crazy, really. How old are you? Blah, blah, blah. And then, so we got together and, and pretty fast, never left each other uh, after that day. Um, so the first years were really, you know, going back and forth, trying to communicate as much as we could. We, we bought modems, we bought rainbow magazines. Uh, uh, it, it was very difficult to bring stuff. It, we would have to import from the US with huge um, uh, custom charges. Um, there was also long delays. long delays. It took months to get anything, and sometimes you, you, the, the stuff wouldn't arrive. Yeah. You know, it would just get lost in mail. So 
if you look closely at the top of that picture, there's the Cocoa Bite Club banner. And these are things that we never notice. We just, you know, have the photos around. We don't care. And then our friend Ricardo has been especially very good um, at keeping the history of, of Cocoa Bite around. And actually, when I left Colombia to study in Canada, my father gave all my stuff to Ricardo, and he kept it for the longest time. And when we reunited last year, that's when I, I you know, I realized uh, everything that we had done uh, at that point. Uh, this is Reinaldo, and that's uh, DMP 130, I think. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, yeah, we had very nice setups. Our parents actually bought us TVs, separate TVs, to put on our computers after, you know, uh, losing access to the family TV. And um, we bought floppy drives. We bought a bunch of hardware later on with the proceeds of our uh, <laughs> club activities. Uh, this is Reinaldo when he became a trader and essentially went to the 10D1000 line. Uh, having a big family, how many brothers and sisters? Six. Six, yeah. six people. They, uh, mo um, I think you were in the middle or not? I was the fifth one. The, the one of the two youngest. So yeah. the older brother and sisters, of course, when you know, started going to schools, university, and it was the couple of years where uh, everything became Intel 8088 uh, PCs. So uh, this here is a. Uh, a picture when we reunited last year. And for the longest time, I was saying, ah, I have, you know, every time you go to Colombia, if I go to Cali, I have to stop by in Bogota. That's one of the stops. And Reynaldo living in Bogota, I was always telling him, oh, I don't have time. Next time we will meet. And this year, I made a point to go see him. And this is like one week before complete lockdown everywhere. And we had a great time. We talked about the cocoa forever, and we said, OK, Let's meet again in July and really, you know, do some stuff. So I left everything there, <laughs> and I haven't been able to come back since then. Uh, what happened next? Uh, our parents, so these are uh, Reynaldo's parents. Reynaldo's in the middle, and these are my parents when I was very little. And I think uh, it's important to, to include them in this story because Without them, none of this would have happened. It's, it is by chance that my dad bought a, a cocoa, but he had the insight, you know, he, he understood that something was happening at that time. And every time that we met, every time that we geeked out and that we typed listings forever, that we stayed up very late, that uh, we had to commute or, you know, go to each other's places, uh, uh, the time that I, uh, uh, you know, took the phone for too long and then I had to buy a CB radio and he did and we learned to put antennas on our roof so that we could talk enough, long enough. They brought us to all these places. They prepared food for us. They, they put up with whatever we were doing with the phone lines and with the electricity and, and so on. So it's, it's really thanks to them that we're here today and, and that's what drove me to go into IT, you know. Uh, so I don't know about you, but since I felt for comfortable typing on a keyboard since age 11, then the rest felt pretty easy uh, going to school and learning about that. Uh, this is um, uh, the back of a card that I got from the Rainbow. Of course, our Bible magazine here in the Coco community. Uh, so I used to send programs to the, the magazine. Maybe many of you did. And uh, I got rejected every time. But it doesn't matter. I kept these as little pro trophies. And oh, we can see this one. But uh, yeah, my mailbox was always full of these things. And at some point, when I met Reinaldo, he said, wait a minute, I have a P.O. box. <laughs> you don't have to you know, tell everyone at your house to be careful or anything like that. Everything's going to go to the P.O. box. And we can go there together. And we started writing to everyone. So. If you look at the book that I passed around, there's a listing of all the cocoa clubs in North America. We used to write to those, those clubs and to other people and exchange letters. And this is one of the programs, listings, that we would trade with other people by mail. So today, you can download the whole car computer collection of software that ever existed. I think it's like two or three gigs, right? It'll take you a few hours. But at the time, we had to send these sketches back and forth. And in this listing, what you see is check marks of people telling us. So we send the list. They check mark whatever they wanted, sent us a bunch of the sketches. 
we sent back a bunch of diskettes and so, so on and so forth. And this listing particularly is in alphabetical order. There is a header there. So I made a point, I think this was my listing, but we always were programming stuff to, to optimize this. So this listing was a, a database that we would generate and add stuff to every time we got new software and we sent out new software. Um, of course, this was uh, you know community sharing. There's another word for that today. I think it's piracy or something like that. <laughs> so community sharing brought us to really push things to the formal side, you know. And remember, I was 13 or 14, and and all my friends were, and so we're, we're talking to all these bunch of adults, and we figured pretty fast that we needed to, you know, like go in in disguise in plain sight. So I I would have a, a business card. I was the president of the Three Guys Club. <laughs> and our postal box, box was listed here, which was very impressive. You know, oh, this must be someone important. They have a PO box. Um, we, in reality, what we did was uh, our, our meetings were mostly in the bus route to learn English. So this is my scorecard, English courses. And the only reason I'm showing you this is because of this, we were able to kind of figure when did we meet and for how long did we do that? So for a full year, we were going in the bus, back and forth, telling stories and so on, getting the mail at the P.O. box, and that's where, that's where we were getting our, our dose of, of color computer software and, and information. So yeah, this is my, my diploma. <laughs> and it's really interesting because, well, yeah, I know English. OK, congratulations. Now what? What's, what's next? What's going on today? So I was able to move to Canada after studying at the Lycée Francais Paul Valéry in, in Colombia. So I kept my French that I learned when I was a kid. Uh, went to French school. So in, in Quebec, uh, the language is French. Official languages in Canada are French and English. And so it's interesting because my kids now look up to me not only to fix the printer when it doesn't work, but they know that I dabble in, you know, I'm starting to fix things, uh, solder, I bought the cocos. They see all of this and they absorb the information very fast. So I started to, taking classes, and this is my, uh, my son Rafael and me in a recent workshop for soldering. And I think uh, he's, um, he's 11 now, uh, you know, and I think we often underestimate what the <coughs> next generation of kids are going to do. What, what the, what, you know, who's going to come after us to fix and to play with these things? And the very important notion that we often forget and that the big companies uh, are trying to erase completely from the collective soul is what is a file? What is a directory? Where are those stored? And the fact is we understood that as kids because on the color computer you really had to calculate how much space you were going to type your listing in because it wouldn't fit on a, on a diskette. It, Probably the cassette would uh, break if it was too long to save. Uh, so we dealt with those kind of, of restrictions with kids today don't have. They have unlimited access to everything all the time, 24 seven. So it's really over the of information and I'm trying to focus on, hey, you know what? You need to remember these things can be repaired, should be repairable and so on. And this brings us to the Coco reboot. So we talked about a bit about reuniting in person and online. That happened in 2020. So it's been a year or so. Last year, well, COVID happened, so we couldn't go as fast as we wanted in our plans. Uh, we started buying Coco stuff. Uh, the auction is great at, at Coco Fest to do that. And it's really been a learning experience, very humbling experience. After 30 years or so in IT, uh, I'm used to buy software, to shop around, to haggle, and so on. Uh, vintage computing is really different, and it's a uh, you know it's a very interesting uh, experience. Um, tons of fun, and the rescuing part is really really interesting for me. That's what I focused on. So I've drove and I, I've driven um, seven hours back and forth to go to get a PC or, or to get a Coco that was selling for fifty bucks. And so oh this one is special. It has a composite output. Oh this one is so oh my god it's so dirty. Uh, I have to put a mask on to even, you know, look at it. Um, but yeah, I, um, 
I started to think, yeah, it's important to get the older cocos, especially the ones that don't have much memory or don't have anything special with them, and you know, uh, buy a few joysticks here, uh, get some software here, uh, get the adapter on the back to connect them to a modern TV, and then sell it to someone else. Even if I lose some money, uh, you know, put it in good hands and then grow the color computer community. So in that respect, you know, reuniting also happened on Facebook, Discord, and is mostly in English. So Ricardo, my friend, doesn't speak English really, so he's completely absent. Uh, so, you know, I consider him like a, a, a genius in electronics and hardware, but there's no way that he can share what he knows as fast as he uh, would like to because he doesn't speak English. So he can't write English at the same speed or understand at the same speed that we can. Of course, he can use the available tools, but that's, that doesn't scale. So 2022 and beyond, we're hoping to get, um, you know, to, to uh, get people interested in having better collaboration and realize that maybe, yeah, uh, the, the community today is, is US-centric in English, especially. Of course, there's a huge community that we know about in Brazil. Uh, there may be other clusters in Europe, in other languages. Uh, I heard uh, vintage computing is huge in, in Germany and Japan. Um, so we'd like to get these people together, and one way to do that is uh, welcoming these people in their own native language. So we opened um, a few chat channels on Discord, which is, uh, sorry, not Discord, but Matrix, which is very similar to Discord, and the intention here is not to compete, but to complete whatever resources we have right now. And the other, uh, you know, the other intention with this uh, is kind of have fun with the notion that the user groups are not dead and, and shouldn't be, you know. There used to be pages and pages and pages in the old magazine of, of user groups in every, almost, you know, several cities in every state in the U.S. and, and many different countries too. Uh, Argentina, uh, uh, Japan, uh, in France and everywhere there were groups. And today we think we're, they are gone. I think pretty much like ourselves, these people just got busy, life got on, yeah, and, you know, and, and that's it. But if we look around and if we don't only tell them to go to Facebook in English, maybe they're gonna start their own thing and you know, join us together. And maybe if one or two people speak English in each different community, then maybe then that's enough to bridge them just like we're bridging today Spanish and English. And I think we need uh, a way to trade and to get people interested in that. My way of trading is trying to improve as much as I can the documentation and give as much as I can and bring back that knowledge. And so for sure, Ricardo has been following us for the past couple of days. So we send schematics, we explain things in Spanish. Oh, mira esto lo que pasó aquí. Uy, mira como lo hicieron. Y of course, you know, it, it takes some time for us to do that and to repeat things and to uh, blog about it, write about it. So we started a new blog, and we register our domain name with the Colombian uh, domain name extension, which today is a commercial extension that anyone can buy. You know, you don't need physical geographic presence in Colombia or, or a business in Colombia to that at .co. And that's the craziest thing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to finish here and, and maybe have some questions, or if you want to to tell us about your own experience and or your opinion on what we're doing. And it's really emotional for me to finish like this because it, it bridges the old name, Coco Byte. Uh, we just found out, yeah, it's available for a Colombian domain name. And this is where we start, you know, on, on a new page, uh, sharing on a website to a bunch of people that we don't know or care who they are or where, and much faster than before. Hopefully, more efficiently, and especially with your help, would be, would be great. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, Reynaldo, if you wanted to add something or just join me if there are any questions. Uh, no, thank guys, you so thank much. you so much. And thank you for, I mean, sharing all this time with you and uh, I mean, all the things that uh, we have learned this um, weekend. Uh, so it's been very helpful for both of us. Oh yeah, uh, I, I forgot to mention something. Um, yesterday at the meeting, at the Glenside uh, meeting, I, I mentioned, if any of you want to become honorary members of Cocobyte today, 
just uh, you know, come by our table, give us your names and email, and then uh, we'll start annoying you with uh, <laughs> what we do. We'll yeah. add you to, to the group chat, and then uh, you will see a bunch of stuff in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that listing on Cuban Boca Grove. <coughs> there was a listing for the Dearborn, Michigan Club that I used to belong to when I lived in Michigan. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad she's still there. Yeah, so one of the ways that we were able to track down when Cocoa Bite started is we actually sent our own entry for Cocoa Bite uh, to be listed in the Rainbow Magazine. Yeah, I, I don't know how many hours I spent on, on all the Rainbow Magazine by trying to find yeah. so when, when it was published. So we probably should have like two or three months. That was the main yeah. time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, from so, to so the thing yeah. is, uh, before coming here, I asked Reynaldo, hey man, wh when were we first listed in Rainbow. Yep. When, what, what's the date? And said, oh yeah, I'm gonna look for it. <laughs> and there's this like, I don't know, 200 magazines to look into. Yep. And it's PDF searchable, but then you still have to download them, have them around and so. And of course, when we download the whole magazine collection, we focus on one or two pages. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. We start reading everything and uh, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes in the next few months, expect a screenshot of wherever we first appeared on, on Rainbow. So, uh, any of you guys have uh, uh, Spanish-speaking uh, Latino friends in the area or elsewhere that, that are also into Coco? I know Salvador is, is around here. Who else? Do you know? No? We have the only thing that Eric or Montero who likes to apply right now. Oh. He was nice in New York. Okay, okay. yeah. Uh, well, they understand everything we say in Spanish. We don't understand everything they say, but uh, great people. I've met uh, quite a few great hackers and, and computer ent uh, color computer enthusiasts there, and uh, especially one guy that built a new sort, uh, type of joystick that we have at our table that you can try. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely in touch with them, and, and w when I say Latin American, that includes Brazil, of course, yeah. Uh, I think that, that's a very good question. There, um, I think it, my, my, my um, opinion has changed a lot. Uh, meeting the people in person is just incredible energy, um, friendship, uh, camaraderie. Uh, of course, there's the people that know each other for 20 years, so it's, it's a bit difficult, more difficult for us to penetrate that circle. Um, uh, yeah, I'm the annoying guy that will just jump at your table and say, hey, good morning. And that, that kind of <laughs> takes uh, some people off balance, right? Well, that's okay. uh, so <laughs> being from Colombia, that's, that's what I am. And you know, sometimes uh, this morning I hugged someone and I felt, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, a Canadian guy with a mask uh, hugging me. And, and yeah, that, that's what we do. But I, I think the feedback has been great about what we're doing and very welcoming. Uh, this morning we almost, well, you almost killed a cocoa tree. <laughs> and a bunch of people jumped in to help and, oh, you should do this and we can do that. And everyone trading and, and giving away tools yeah, here. Nice. That's really great. And the fact that everyone knows that this is where it's happening and we need to keep doing this so it's not forgotten and gone forever uh, is crazy for me, really crazy. I, I, I really like the way that you're sustaining the club. I was talking to my wife yeah. early this morning and I was, Yeah, uh, I, I was saying that I really like the way that you're sustaining the club. And I was w when I was talking to my wife this morning, I, I was, I mean, telling her about the auctions and everything that you do. And uh, she says, and why, I mean, why do, do not they go online on eBay and, and sell all that stuff? And say, yeah, because it's not the same. I mean, it's the way of, um, I mean, sustaining something. And I really like that idea, and I hope you can keep doing that. Because, um, you know, you're doing two things um, that I believe are very important. That I mean, you're uh, finding a way to keep this moving, uh, so finding some, some bucks out of the auctions. And the other one, you're pretty sure that whoever is getting this, it's at least a little bit interested in, in what they're buying, right? So that's, I mean, that's something I, I really like and uh, from what you do, guys. Uh, 
Um, it is. It is. So here's this thing. Ricardo always tells me, uh, I think a couple days ago, I was telling me, oh, I got this great thing, but it's in English. And he's like, yeah, send it along, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll manage. Yeah. And that's what we did. I mean, we typed pages upon, no, dozens upon dozens of pages. We typed, if anyone remembers the rainbow BBS issue, we typed the whole BBS thing without knowing much what would happen next when we would hit run, you know, at the end of it. And then we learned English after the fact. So, uh, yeah, we don't care that we don't understand English. We'll type code and, and run it, right? Nowadays, uh, you know, uh, it's a security issue doing that. But uh, Ricardo doesn't speak English, but he can read anything yeah, you throw at him. Yeah, reading is much yeah. easier for, I mean, I, I could say most of the um, Spanish-speaking um, yeah. community, right? Um, but, I mean, listening could be challenging. Yeah, and the thing with reading, because I, you know, I, I insist, I offered a few people here to translate their documentation of the great hardware that is coming out. Uh, the thing with reading is that you can actually uh, get people interested that you would have never been able to get through. Because if, if they see something in English, some people will just, okay, I can't do this, bye. If they see it in Spanish, it makes it that much easier. Even if, even if you could theoretically just translate something online, uh, yeah. We have a lot of documentation that is not digital yet, so yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Forty years. Yeah. So so. Fifty years. So I understand that. Yeah. So John Strong. Uh, um, a good friend of ours now, uh, uh, 3D printing genius, I would like to say, is telling us that here's experience, and, and many of you in the U.S. maybe have lived that. You took enough Spanish classes to kind of understand what it is and, oh, yeah, and recognize it, and maybe you can read it because you can go at whatever speed you want when you read it. But if you're listening to someone in Spanish or in English on the other side, um, yeah, there are great tools out there, but it's going to be much, much easier. I promise you, there's a bunch of Spanish-speaking people. If we put together a Spanish uh, Coco Crew or whatever podcast, uh, yeah, they're going to be listening to that. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's much easier for them to get the information like that. Yeah, I think I think the language barrier is just uh, not really that that big today because of the tools. But you can go faster, and of course, um, you know you, you're gonna make less technical mistakes. Yeah, if you it's, speak it's the, the same. way of engaging community. So yeah. it will be faster if you just speak the I mean local na native language. So uh, once you're there, I mean things are different, right? So um, um, the big challenge is how to engage the people, right? How we get together. Yeah, that, and yeah. and for us, because we have, I mean, I, I live in Montreal in French. Um, I, I visit the U.S., or I have friends in the rest of Canada in English, and when I go to Colombia, it's pretty much Spanish. So when people tell me, hey, how do you do this? Oh, I want to do that too. Oh, well, sorry, it's in English. Uh, for the U.S., it's okay. For the Canada, it's okay. For Colombia, I'd love to welcome everyone to just, you know, don't think it's an English-only club. Yep. Um, I don't want to insist too much on that either, but I think we have other bigger challenges, uh, like gathering the documentation, digitizing everything we can, and make it discoverable. So that part I'm more worried about. The language thing, we'll sort it out, and uh, we, you know, I'm, I won't forget English or French, and y you won't forget English. So yeah, we can still be around in the conferences and bridge people together. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, thank you so much, and uh, have a great day. We'll still around uh, here for a couple more days. And uh, yeah, hopefully you join us in this effort. Thank you so much.
Bien, bien, bien.